What's up guys, it's Dan, it's gone, and today we'll be doing my updated farm system rankings after the 2024 MLB trade deadline and draft. Since the last time I made this video, the two most important events that dictate a team's overall organizational strength have occurred in the deadline and the draft. Teams with high-end draft picks can add a new player every year, while teams that want to compete can now sell off some long-term assets for short-term benefits. And other teams that maybe aren't as good can be in a position where they can invest in some long-term projects. This video will go into the major developments for each farm system, whether it be the top draft picks, trades, or graduations, as well as rank each farm system individually. But before we get onto this video, could you guys please hit the like and subscribe button? Currently, only 3% of people who watch my videos are subscribed, so if y'all do, not only would it help me grow my channel, but it would also encourage me to create more videos like this one for you guys. And without further ado, let's get onto the video. After years at being at the top of the American League and having low-end draft picks, the Astros fall to 30th on my farm system rankings. Right now, there's simply not a lot there. The Justin Verlander trade last year, as well as the Yusei Kikuchi trade this year, has sapped a lot of the talents that provided this farm system upside. The real crown jewel of this system is Jacob Melton, a former 2022 first rounder and potential 5 to a player with great speed and developing power, although he is having an underwhelming season in AAA this year. You have to look for some of their lower level prospects like Luis Baez, Bryce Matthews, and now 2024 first rounder Walker Janik to provide this farm system with more depth and top 100 upside if they have a great season. Right now, Bryce Matthews specifically is having that great season. He's tearing up high A and now holding his own in double A as a 22 year old shortstop, with a combined OPS over 900 on the year. With his age at 22 years old, he'll never be a truly elite level prospect, but if he keeps up his production, he can certainly be a nice trade chip or future above average shortstop at the major league level. While the San Diego Padres may have gotten rave reviews for their choice of upgrading the bullpen to drastic amounts in order to have a good chance of going deep into the postseason, no one can argue that the cost prospect-wise that the Padres accrued was a ton. Tanner Scott, Jason Adam, and Martin Perez costed them seven prospects, including some of their top prospects in pitchers Adam Major, Robbie Snelling, and Dylan Lesko, as well as center fielder Homer Bush Jr. This comes on top of two massive trades previously for Luis Arias and Dylan Cease, and I don't care how good a development team is, the amount of trades that the Padres have done has sapped this system, but it's all worth it if it correlates to lasting Major League success. Combined with an underwhelming initial draft haul led by Cash Mayfield, as well as some struggles from their remaining top prospects in Ethan Salas and Leo Dallas Dave Reese in the lower levels of the minor leagues, and the Padres now find themselves at the lowest spot they've been in a long time. But with their excellent international scouting department, I have no doubts that they will once again climb these ranks. With the Atlanta Braves, they were pretty quiet prospect-wise when it came down to the trade deadline, and although they were had a pretty good draft all things considered, they fall down a little bit in these rankings simply because teams that used to be behind them either had bigger hauls quantity-wise due to more valuable selections in the draft, or were sellers at the trade deadline. This system is widely the same since I talked about it a couple of months ago. Hurston Waldrop, AJ smith Shaver, J.R. Ritchie, and Owen Murphy are still the main pieces, with the first two knocking on the door of rookie status and the last two in their lower levels of the minor leagues now pitching to great results. Now 2024 first rounder Cam Caminiti joins them as an 18 year old high school lefty. For this system to develop, it cannot be due to the draft due to the low end selections that they will get. And as a result, you have to look for recent international signees Jose Perdomo and Luis Guanipa to potentially stake their claims as top prospects after being former top level international signees. Keep an eye out for their production. The Los Angeles Angels made a couple of moves this deadline, with the key one being to acquire two key pitching prospects from the Phillies in George Klassen and Samuel Aldegheri, also getting four lower level minor leaguers from the Red Sox for Luis Garcia, led by 2019 second rounder Matthew Lugo, who has a 942 OPS across AA and AAA this year, and combining that with a 2024 draft that saw them take second baseman Christian Moore, who slots in as the top prospect in their system with the 8th overall pick, as well as outstanding play by Caden Dana recently, with 115 strikeouts and 105 innings this year in AA, and the Angels have seen very encouraging progress from the farm system to begin their rebuild, but still find themselves in such a miserable spot beforehand to see any drastic changes despite all of these improvements recently. For the Kansas City Royals, you got to commend them for committing to the production of their team through a flurry of trades, but they already had one of the league's worst farm systems beforehand, and despite not trading any real star prospects, they lost a lot of depth by acquiring Hunter Harvey, Lucas Ursag, Michael Lorenzen, and Paul DeYoung. However, a strong 2024 MLB draft class keeps their farm system afloat for the time being. Jack Caglione becomes a top prospect immediately, as one of the best two-way players since Brendan McKay, he has a leap level upside, but his power alone makes him a top 25 prospect in the game immediately. 
Pitchers David Shields, Drew Beam, and LP Landvin also worked to replenish some of the depth lost in trades as well. And in terms of the players on the farm who could potentially make an impact down the stretch for a playoff team, look for Noah Cameron to potentially make his debut in the bullpen this year. He just recently got called up to AAA and has been great with a 3.44 ERA and 97 strikeouts in 81 innings. While he doesn't have overwhelming stuff with a fastball that only sits in the low 90s, his new delivery has deceptively thrown minor league hitters off balance this year. For the Rangers, they saw their top prospect in Wyatt Langford graduate over this time period and are kind of in a transition period regarding their farm system. At the deadline, they did a little bit of buying and selling, acquiring a nice reliever prospect in Walter Pennington in the Michael Lorenzen trade, but also giving up five prospects in trades for Robbie Grossman, Carson Kelly, and Andrew Chafin, including a great starting pitching prospect in Joseph Montalovo, who's posted an ERA of 2.44 this season in high A. Having won the World Series the year prior, their top draft picks of catcher Malcolm Moore and Dylan Drilling also set them behind by default compared to other teams because of less draft capital. Although their top prospects in shortstop Sebastian Walcott and right-hand pitcher Emiliano Teodo keep this system afloat, with former first-rounder and former potential superstar Kumar Rocker also finally making his return after missing all of the 2023 season and most of 2022, pitching to great initial results as he looks to regain his tarnished potential. The Phillies lost two of their best pitching prospects in their system in the Carlos Estevez trade, although a large portion of that lost value prospect-wise comes back in the Gregory Soto trade for Seth Johnson, one of the Orioles' top pitching prospects, along with Moises Chance, making it very close to even from the trade deadline additions and subtractions from the farm. As another one of these teams that made it deep into the playoffs the previous season, they automatically fall behind the eight ball in terms of drafting the elite-level prospects. And while top prospect Andrew Painter is out until 2025, with serious questions about his long-term viability as a starter arising, and Aiden Miller and Starlin Cabba are also struggling in the lower levels of the minor leagues, outfielder Justin Crawford and catcher Eduardo Tait are emerging as some of the best prospects in the Philly system, with Crawford hitting over 300 across high and double A, and Tait slugging over 500 in single A at only 17 years old. Tai is one of my favorite prospects in all of baseball right now, and a huge watch over the next couple of years to be an elite level prospect if he continues this production at such a young age. The Blue Jays do indeed jump up these rankings thanks to a busy trade deadline in which they sold off a lot of their rental guys. But by not selling off any of the guys with multiple years left on their deal, like Vladimir Guerrero Jr. and Bo Bichette, they did not acquire enough capital to truly make a huge jump up these rankings. Although, I did love the haul that they got for their rentals, acquiring right-handed pitcher Jake Bloss, outfielder Jonathan Classe, Charles McAdoo, Will Wagner, Cutter Coffey, and RJ Shrek to add considerable depth to a farm system that was previously lacking such. Although, they have yet to have an upper echelon prospect in their system, and the struggles of Ricky Tideman, who's posted an ERA over 5 in 8 starts this year, and former first-rounder Arjun Namala, who's seen his batting average over in the 210s, does not help. Outside of the two struggling top prospects, they also have 2024 first-rounder Trey Yesevich, who will be brought along as a starter out of East Carolina, and Orelvis Martinez, who has been tearing up AAA, and only just recently made his major league debut after all of those trades have opened up a spot for him. As buyers during the 2024 MLB trade deadline, the D-backs made three trades, but only two of them required prospects. AJ Puck got two decent prospects, 21-year-old first baseman Division de Los Santos and 20-year-old center fielder Andrew Pintar. Both of them were having excellent seasons in their respective levels. That being said, the 2024 MLB draft class for the D-backs was a relatively strong one, as they had three of the first 34 selections, and their two first picks in Slade Caldwell and Ryan Walchmidt immediately slotted in as two of the top 10 prospects in Arizona's system. They also still have top prospect Jordan Lawler in the system, who is a top 10 prospect in all of baseball. Although he has been set back with multiple injuries this year, he still has a talent. As well as 2023 first rounder Tommy Troy, who has been beset by injuries as well, and Drew Jones, who is having a resurgent season with an OPS above 800, but is still an A-ball and is now second professional season. The Giants are another one of these teams who saw very little change throughout their farm system, with a deadline that saw them acquire a talented 21-year-old third baseman Saban Ceballos in the Jorge Soler trade and Jacob Bressenhan in the Alex Cobb trade, very little in the grand scheme of an entire farm system. In the draft, they got James Tibbs III, a talented outfield prospect and pure hitter, as well as a steal in the fourth round in Dakota Jordan. And as for their top prospects, while Carson Wisenhunt has struggled with an ERA near 6 and 19 starts, Bryce Eldridge has showcased the power that made him a former first rounder with 12 home runs, and pitcher Hayden Birdsong has looked very encouraging in the major leagues with an ERA under 3 and 6 starts. Outside of Noel V. Marte graduating and the drafting of Chase Burns, the Cincinnati Reds farm system at the top end has remained relatively the same. 
At the deadline, they were fairly quiet, although I did like the acquisition of Ovis Portes in the Lucas Sims trade. As a 19-year-old, 6'4 right-handed pitching prospect who has struck out 41 single-A batters in 34 innings this year with a 2.12 ERA. While their top prospect in Rhett Lauder, a 2023 first-rounder, has failed to truly separate himself from the competition, he's been decent. However, one player that I would like to highlight is former first-rounder Sal Stewart. He has almost as many walks as strikeouts this year and has an OPS near 850 in high A at 20 years old. Already a top prospect, if Stewart continues this production in the jump to double A, we could seriously see his stock rise a ton. The Oakland A's now see themselves rise up a fair amount in these rankings even without trading away any of their key pieces like Brent Rooker and Mason Miller, as they acquired four pieces from the trade deadline, including three prospects from the Lucas Ursek trade that slot in as top 30 prospects in their system, adding very nice depth. As for their top prospects, 2024 first-rounder Nick Kurtz and second-rounder Tommy White join a nice list of former first-rounders and international signees. 2023 first-rounder Jacob Wilson tore up the upper levels of the minor leagues with an OPS over 1,000, and if it weren't for his hamstring injury, would be playing in the major leagues right now. As well as 2023 international signee Luis Morales posting a nice full season in high A with a 3.6 ERA and 15 starts. We'll see how the new additions from both the draft and the deadline work for this team, but Oakland's farm system is beginning to look very incredible encouraging from their depth and star talent now. Despite acquiring both Eric Fetty and Tommy Pham at the trade deadline, the only player prospect-wise that they had to trade was a 17-year-old prospect in Oliver Gonzalez. They were also able to get third baseman J.J. Weatherholt in the draft, who some outlets had going first overall and slots in as one of the best prospects in their system. That being said, middling play from some of their top minor league guys prevents this farm system from truly moving up the ranks when on paper they should have. Despite the breakout of Quinn Matthews, a 2023 first-rounder who's posted a 2.67 ERA across single-A all the way up to double-A with 140 strikeouts in 101 innings, and 2022 first-rounder Jimmy Crooks with a 303-401-470 slash line as a catcher, a lot of their guys have either dealt with injuries or have underperformed, like 2023 first-rounder Chase Davis, Victor Scott, or Takoa Roby. After countless years of buying on top of graduations, the Dodgers farm system finally looks like an average farm system for once. They traded two of their top 15 prospects for Jack Flaherty, including a talented young catching prospect in Theron Lorenzo, as well as two other lower level depth prospects in the Tommy Edmond and Michael Kopech trades. That being said, they still held on to most of their top prospects as well as added a talented young high school shortstop in Kellen Lindsley in the draft. And as for the prospects that are already on their farm system, Dalton Rushing remains one of the top catching prospects in the game, and his power production has not stopped upon his promotion to double-A, with Jose de Puala also raking as an outfielder in high A. What carries these rankings for the Dodgers in this farm system are the veteran pitching prospects in the upper levels of the minor leagues. Nick Frasso, River Ryan, and Kyle Hurt all likely would have exhausted their prospect status on any other team, but still remain as prospects thanks to the Dodgers' pitching depth allowing them to work on their game in the minor leagues. For the Mets, they see their spot drop a little bit following the graduation of one of their top prospects, Christian Scott, as well as buying a little bit at the deadline and underperformance from some of their top prospects. That being said, they still have one of the deeper systems in all of baseball. In the first round this year, they selected Carson Benj, one of the best defensive outfielders in his class, who now joins former first-rounder Drew Gilbert and Ryan Clifford as top-level outfield prospects. Although neither of them have been performing particularly well this year, struggling with strikeouts against upper-level arms. Former 2022 first-rounder Jet Williams and 2023 first-rounder Colin Howick have also been struggling as well. Jet is batting below the Mendoza line, and Howick is barely slugging above 300. Amidst what has really been a nightmare season for the top prospects in the Mets system, one bright spot has been Brandon Sproat, a second rounder in the 2023 MLB Draft, who has moved all the way up to AA with a 2.05 ERA in 16 starts and 110 strikeouts in 87 innings of work. The Pittsburgh Pirates farm system drops a decent amount following the graduation of one of the top, top prospects in all of baseball and Paul Skeens, who may just win the NL Cy Young Award, but they also were buyers at the deadline, trading away five prospects to acquire Isaiah kiner falefa Brian De La Cruz, and Jalen Beeks, including one of their top prospects in Charles McAdoo, who is having a breakout season. The Pirates have historically been great at developing pitching prospects. Braxton Ashcraft is having a great season with a 2.88 ERA in the upper levels of the minor leagues, and Thomas Harrington is not far behind him in AA. That being said, they also acquired prospect Nick York from the Red Sox, as well as drafted Connor Griffin in the draft, who I am very high on as a high school shortstop, and those two joined former first-rounder Tamar Johnson, who round out an overall great farm system that, although lacks a true top prospect position player-wise, has depth both in their lineup and pitching. 
The Red Sox farm system took a pretty big hit during the trade deadline, sending over Nick York to the Pirates for former top prospect Quinn Priester, as well as eight lower-level depth prospects for Lucas Sims, Luis Garcia, Danny Jansen, and James Paxton. That being said, I still feel like the Red Sox got a strong enough haul in this draft to move up these rankings along with some improvements from their existing top prospects. Braden Montgomery, their first round pick, had some elite power at Texas A&M while also being a good defender in right field. He headlines a pitcher heavy draft for the Red Sox to look to replace the depth loss in their farm system. As for their top prospects on the team, Marcelo Meyer is having a huge bounce back season in AA, hitting over 300 with an 850 OPS, while Roman Anthony and Kyle Teal are both showcasing some elite level slug on one of the most stacked AA rosters in all of baseball. For more added upside, I want to highlight what Christian Campbell has been doing. Drafted in the fourth round in 2023, Campbell has posted an OPS over 1,000, also in AA, and has the positional versatility to not only skyrocket up these prospect rankings, but also make his major league debut fairly fast. When I made my initial farm system rankings video a couple of months ago, I commented on how the Rockies farm system has the potential to skyrocket up these rankings thanks to a prime drafting position and during the trade deadline. And while they had an absolute home run of a draft, selecting the best player on my board in Charlie Condome, as well as a talented Brody Brett in the second round, they were relatively quiet overall regarding their lineup and rotation during the deadline, limiting their overall improvement. As for the players on the farm currently, Chase Dolander looks like one of the best pitching prospects in the game, moving all the way up to AA this season, with an ERA under 3 and 118 strikeouts in 16 starts, an encouraging start to the former first rounder's career. And highlighting one prospect, I would like to highlight Cole Carey to potentially crack a top 100 list soon. He's slugging nearly 500 this year, albeit in the lower levels of the minor leagues, but he can basically play anywhere along the infield or outfield, including catcher, making him a super utility player that can also hit in the future. This Yankee system as a whole takes a pretty big hit following one of the more aggressive trade deadlines in a while, acquiring Jazz Chisholm for one of their better prospects in Augustine Ramirez, as well as four other depth prospects to complete the trade, as well as acquire Mark Leiter Jr. from the Cubs. On top of that, while the 2024 draft as a whole was pretty solid, there were no impact level prospects acquired to replace what was lost upside-wise from the Chisholm trade. For the farm system report, Jason Dominguez looked primed to graduate but suffered another injury that has looked to be another setback to his promising career but still has the elite level talent to boot. Spencer Jones has looked underwhelming this year but still has the power profile to remain a pretty elite level prospect following a good stretch, and a new wave of Yankee prospects in Roger Garrias, George Lombard Jr., Henry Lalane, and Brando Mejia are just beginning to get their feet wet in the lower levels of the minor leagues. This Brewers farm system takes a pretty big hit following what was, in my opinion, a fairly underwhelming draft in which they selected a couple of depth prospects in Braylon Payne, Blake Burke, and Bryce Message, but no top 10-15 to 15 prospects for their system. Nonetheless, their farm system as a whole is still solid enough for them to be on the borderline of a top 10 farm system. Jacob Mizorowski continues to make his case for being one of the best pitching prospects in all of baseball, making his way up to AAA with a 3.68 ERA and 105 strikeouts in 80.2 innings, and the farm system also has the injured but talented Jefferson Caro, as well as Tyler Black, a polished first baseman prospect, and a breakout prospect in Cooper Pratt, a 2023 sixth rounder who has vaulted up these rankings with a polished hitting approach, already reaching high A at just 19 years old. While the Mariners were one of the more active buying teams at the deadline, trading away six prospects for Randy Arozarena, Justin Turner, Jimmy Garcia, and JT Chargois, including some of their top prospects in Aiden Smith and Brody Hopkins, a strong 2024 draft class as well as internal improvements actually causes them to rise up a couple of spots in these rankings. In the draft, they selected one of the more intriguing pitchers on my board in Harangelo Sinje, a switch pitcher who specifically has nasty breaking stuff from the right-handed side. They also double-dipped in the pitching department by selecting high schooler Ryan Sloan, a projected first-rounder in the second round. And as for the development on the field, former top draft picks Colt Emerson, Tyler Locklear, and Michael Arroyo are all hitting extremely well in their respective levels, while former top international signees Lazaro Montez and Felnin Celestin are already moving up the lower levels of the minor leagues, showcasing the slug that got them signed as elite level prospects. And of course, the Mariners will always have pitching as well, with Michael Morales leading that department with a 3.3 ERA across 20 starts in high A and double A, a deep, deep system that has serious upside with Emerson. Arroyo, Montez, and Celestin, all in the lower levels of the minor leagues. 
While the Cleveland Guardians were buyers at the deadline, they rose up a huge chunk in these rankings off of grabbing one of the best draft halls in all of baseball. With the first overall pick, the Guardians drafted one of the best players on the board in Travis Bazana, who immediately becomes a top 10, if not top 5 prospect in all of baseball, while also building up the pitching ranks in the middle rounds with a couple of borderline top prospects in pitcher Braden Doty, Joey Oeki, as well as catcher Jacob Kozar. This farm system, while lacking depth initially, now has serious depth and star talent to pair alongside top prospects Chase DeLauder, Daniel Espino, Kyle Manzardo, and Jason Churio, although none of them are having particularly great standout seasons for their particular club. The fact that they have so many top prospects, coupled with the draft and recent international signees like Angel Janao and Wilbin Francisca, make this a top 10 farm system. And if it weren't for the Lane Thomas trade, sending over three serious prospects, including the 6'6 lefty Alex Clemmy and 19-year-old Rafael Ramirez Jr., then the Guardians would have likely been comfortably in the top 5 in all of baseball. The Miami Marlins were the seller team at the deadline and basically acquired a brand new farm system with their trades, causing them to skyrocket up these rankings. Prior to the deadline, one could seriously make the case that they were the worst farm system in all of baseball. Their draft, while looking for depth, failed to get any true high-end prospects, with first-rounder PJ Morlando being a top 10 prospect at best in their organization, and their top prospect Noble Mayer has struggled mightily upon his promotion to Double A, with lefty Thomas White looking like the new top dog in the Marlins' farm after posting an ERA under 3 across high A and Double A this season. However, following the deadline, they are now overflowing with depth and high upside prospects. And although they still don't have that elite level prospect, they could in a couple years time with more development. The Tanner Scott trade brought in two top prospects in former first rounder Robbie Snelling and Graham Major, as well as Graham Pauly, who is now a top 15 prospect in their system. From the Jazz Chisholm trade, they got a borderline top 100 prospect in Augustine Ramirez, a talented bat first catching prospect, and Jared Serna, a top 15 prospect in their system. Trevor Rogers gave them top 100 prospect Connor Norby, and the AJ Puck trade gave them a top 10 prospect in Division de los Santos, a borderline top 100 prospect who is leading the minor leagues in home runs, and top 30 prospect in Andrew Pintar. Lastly, trading Brayon de la Cruz, JT Chargois, and Huasco Brazoban gave them four other lower level prospects, who could pan out into something. Right now, it's too, still too early to truly gauge the strength of this farm system until the lower level prospects acquired begin to pan out, but this farm system right now has serious top 5 upside in a year from now. While the major league season as a whole has been encouraging but ultimately underwhelming, the Tigers farm system is set to give them serious improvements in the upcoming future. Let's start with the trade deadline. The Jack Flaherty trade gave them a borderline top 100 prospect in Theron Lorenzo, a power hitting catcher with an outstanding arm and improving catching abilities, as well as former first rounder Trey Sweeney. The other trades also netted them six other prospects, including five pitchers. Next from the draft, they continued to draft high upside high schoolers, selecting the second best one off the board in Bryce Rayner, a power hitting shortstop with a good feel there, as well as a pitcher Owen Hall and Ethan Scheifelbein. The thing about drafting high schoolers is that they have added unknowns being so young, but those unknowns could also result in increased upside, meaning that you could uncover a hidden gem if all works well. And as for prospects that are in the system already, Max Clark, Jackson Job, Kevin McConaughey, and Jace Young all lead the way, as some of the best prospects in all of baseball. Clark has posted an excellent first full season, batting nearly 300 across single and high A, while stealing 27 bases in 83 games, while Young and McConaughey have had great seasons specifically in the power department. And Jackson Job has posted an ERA under 2 across high A and double A in 13 starts, throwing his hat into the ring as the best pitching prospect in all of baseball, and a testament to the Tigers' draft strategy of drafting high schoolers with their elite level selections, drafting him third overall in the 2021 MLB Draft. While the Twins did virtually nothing of note during this trade deadline and their draft was fairly underwhelming, selecting a college-level depth prospect and shortstop Kalen Culpepper with their first-round selection and third baseman Billy Amick with their second-round selection, this Twins farm system has experienced a serious hot streak throughout their entire farm system, resulting in a slight bump in their overall stock. Most, if not all of their top prospects are performing at excellent levels, seeing their stocks rise as a whole throughout the entire year. 2023's fifth overall selection, Walker Jenkins, is raking at 19 years old, moving up to high A with an on-base percentage over 400 and an OPS of 830, while 2022's first-round pick, Brooks, Brooks Lee, has an OPS over 1,000 in the minor leagues and has received a major league call-up just two years after he was drafted, where he is holding his own at the major league level. 
Emmanuel Rodriguez, while dealing with injuries, has posted a 1.1 OPS in his limited time in AA, including a 621 slugging percentage and 479 on base percentage, highlighting an advanced approach and great power at the plate that made him a top international signee in 2019. Lastly, for position players, Luke Keschel, a 2023 second rounder, has made his way all the way up to AA, batting over 300 with a 914 OPS in 99 games. And lastly, as for the pitchers, 6'6 David Festa struck out 89 batters in 60 and a third innings to earn a major league call up, while Zebby Matthews has posted a 2.64 ERA across three levels, ranging up to AAA, with 109 strikeouts in 92 innings. With neither of them being in the top 200 players drafted in their respective drafts, if these now top prospects pan out in the major leagues, it may be time to consider the Twins as another team for the knack for developing starting pitchers. And the high draft pick position players don't hurt either, adding to what is one of the best and deepest classes in all of baseball. This Cubs farm system takes a small step back in large part due to the graduation of Pete Crow Armstrong and Cade Horton's injury cooling its stock a little bit. That being said, they are by no means a weakening farm system. Matt Shaw and Owen Casey, the Cubs' two premium position player prospects, are continuing to show their hitting prowess in the upper levels of the minor leagues, and James Triantos, Kevin Alcantara, and Moises Ballesteros are doing the same. While they didn't get any great prospects of note swapping depth prospects during the deadline, they did get a top 15 player in the draft in Cam Smith and are continuing to see great hitting from one of the deepest farm systems in the game. One could argue that the Washington Nationals have the best duo of prospects in all of baseball in James Wood and Dylan Cruz, both of them borderline top 5 prospects in all of baseball. They have superstar potentials as tan corner outfielders, and while the main thing hurting the Nationals ranking as a whole has been their depth over the past couple of years, struggling to see drastic improvements from their top prospects outside of winning crews like Cavalli and Green, due to this year's trade deadline and draft, they are very much on their way towards not only having the star talent, but also the depth to boot. They were able to send over Lane Thomas to the Guardians for a borderline top 100 prospect in Alex Clemmy, as well as depth prospects Rafael Ramirez Jr. and Jose Tena. They also got a top 10 prospect in Caden Wallace and a draft pick for Hunter Harvey, and two depth prospects for Dylan Floro and Jesse Winker. And in the draft, that extra draft pick allowed them to get two first round picks in theory, selecting shortstop Seaver King out of Wake Forest, another top 100 prospect, and catcher Caleb Lomovita, one of my favorite catching prospects coming into the draft process. Already a top 10 part farm system to begin with, the moves made both during this deadline and the during the draft significantly boosted a farm system that is looking to contribute major league talent very soon to end this rebuild. While the Chicago White Sox didn't receive the best grades for how they handled the deadline in terms of acquiring the best deals, they still added a ton in prospect capital to aid what is now a burgeoning farm system. And while I thought that they could have done better in the draft with a top 5 selection, they were bound to get a very solid player to add in their farm system and that player ended up being Lefty Hagen Smith, who immediately becomes a top 3 prospect in their system and likely top 25 overall. Despite the graduation of top prospect Drew Thorpe, this farm system has a star talent, and the trades and draft class as a whole added much needed depth to create an excellent farm system. At the top, the talent remains the same. While Colson Montgomery has struggled, Noah Schultz, a 6 foot 9 lefty, has remained every bit the future ace of the pitching staff that the White Sox hopes he would be. Reaching as high as AA, Schultz has posted a 2.6 ERA with 87 strikeouts and 65 innings, one of, if not the best pitching prospect in all of baseball. Rounding out the rest of their elite prospects is Edgar Caro, who is having a monster season in AAA this year, betting over 300, as well as Kai Bush, a 6'6 lefty with an ERA under 3 this year and the upper levels of the minor leagues. And 22-year-old Jairo Iarte is holding his own in AA after being acquired in the Dylan Cease trade. With the Hagen Smith selection, the White Sox farm system is seriously beginning to make a name for itself as a pitching powerhouse. And if all of these pitchers pan out, it's not far fetched to say that the White Sox will have the best rotation top down in the year 2028. Despite everything that has happened to the Orioles system, from a couple of graduations to a huge trade involving their top prospect in Connor Norby, as well as a couple of other trades taking away some other depth pieces, the Orioles still remain a top 5 farm system. I love the team's draft starting with outfielder Vance Honeycutt, a high upside potential 5 tool player that if he can fix his strikeout issues will be an amazing player, and Griff O'Farrell and Ethan Anderson being nice depth prospects. On the roster, their farm continues to have huge depth in their star talent department. Jackson Holiday's second go-round in the major leagues has been encouraging, and he's still only 20 years old, who's shown he can be productive against older competition. Samuel Basalo is only 19 years old and is raking against AA pitchers, and Kobe Mayo just got called up as an elite-level power threat. On the pitching side, while they did lose a couple of arms from their trades, they still have a couple of older prospects in Chase McDermott and Cade Povich. And the 2023 first-rounder Enrique Bradfield Jr. has been solid in his first professional season. 
Overall, while they lost a couple of bullets from the trade deadline, this factory production continues to turn out amazing productive players, and I have no doubt that this 2024 draft will continue to do just that. Amidst all the trades for the Marlins, it's pretty easy to forget that the Rays actually were one of the bigger sellers this year as well. They acquired two prospects from the Isaac Paredes trade, three prospects including a top 10 prospect in Brody Hopkins and a top 15 prospect in Aiden Smith in the Randy Rosarena trade, three prospects in the Zach Eflin trade, including one of the Orioles' top pitching prospects in Jackson Ballmeister, as well as a top 100 prospect in the former first rounder Dylan Lesko, and two other top 30 prospects in the Jason Adam trade. Simply put, the Rays farm system was already in the top half in the league before the deadline, and the depth and star prospects acquired in the deadline make this system the best in all of baseball. There's a bevy of names I could talk about when talking about the Rays farm system. 2024 first rounder Theo Gillen has all the makings of a future star, with a polished hitting approach at only 18 years old. Junior Caminero, while struggling with injuries, has resulted in an overall dip in his numbers, remains a top 5 prospect in all of baseball with an elite hitting tool. 2021 first rounder Carson Williams and 2022 first rounder Xavier Isaac are now approaching the upper levels of the minor leagues, with Isaac specifically posting a great season with a 925 OPS across two levels. And 2023 first rounder Braden Taylor has been excellent in his first professional season with the Rays, slugging over 500 making it all the way up to double A. In terms of underrated prospects, Chandler Simpson has the best contact seen since Luis Arias, but he's also extremely fast and has gold glove caliber defense, while also batting over 350 in double A this year. The 2023 third rounder Trey Morgan is also batting over 340 with a 908 OPS across single A and high A this year. And while the pitching is not as strong, newly acquired Dylan Lesko, Brody Hopkins, and Jackson Ballmeister round out what is an incredibly solid future rotation for them. And although the timelines vary for the Rays in terms of their prospects, the future looks bright in Tampa Bay once again. Well, thank you guys so much for watching all the way to the end in what has been a very long video. If you enjoyed, please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and comment down below new video ideas. Also, comment down below if you would like me to do more Farm System Rankings videos. And if without further ado, I will see you guys in the next one. God bless.